wake up, Billy. Uh, we there? No, still a ways to go. But from here, we have to go on foot. It's a surprise. I want you to find out for yourself. Or don't you like surprises? I like them. Who doesn't? But what kind of surprise requires you to carry a gun? Name me one thing you can do in Santa Esperanza without carrying a gun. Touche. Do as I say and you'll see. Take it from Jim Dockers. Because you're my friend, right? Don't let your guard down. Have you heard of the Voduna cult? You mean voodoo? Dolls and needles? Yes and no. It's different varieties of the same thing. The Vodun religion from East Africa. In Cuba, they call it voodoo. In Haiti, it's voodoo. Santa Esperanza had its own version. A little community that lived in these woods, no more than 200 people, I reckon. Ah. Right. They say practically all of them died. A sort of civil war sparked up by betrayal. Betrayal between friends. Really? What kind of betrayal? The Vodunas place particular importance on a person's name. They chose a name for themselves when they reached adulthood and they only revealed it to their partners and their descendants. Is that so? It is. The legend says that while he was out hunting with his right-hand man, the chief of the Vodunas was attacked by... And what did everyone else call him? Hey, you? Come on, don't be a jerk. One, two, three. They had different names for it, dated to use, nicknames similar to Indian names. Anyway, while he was out hunting, the chief of the tribe was attacked by a bear. A bear? Don't tell me you dragged me into a wood full of bears. I wasn't joking when I told you not to let your guard down. Shit. The chief's wounds look fatal, so he confided in his best friend, the best hunter in the tribe and whispered his true name to him. The hunter left him in the woods, went back to the village, and told the news to the chieftain's wife and children. Well, that's tough. It takes a lot of cojones to give someone that kind of news. That's why I always take care of it. But I wouldn't pity him. Sullivan River, closing to the Donovan Dam, I think. I didn't think geography was your department. Sometimes I like to dabble in things that aren't officially my department. So I see. According to Verduna law, from the moment the hunter whispered the dead husband's name to the chief's wife, he would take his place. In what sense? 
In the eyes of the tribe, he became him. He had to take on his role, fulfill his duties, raise his children, and sleep with his wife. Damn. Should be right here. What? The sign tells us which way we have to go. Must be hidden in the undergrowth. Let me look for it. Okay, I'll cover you. This burned out a long time ago. Weeks, I guess. What kind of hunter abandons his trap when he leaves the woods? Here's the sign. Looks like it was knocked over by a poacher's prey. Well spotted. Let's go on. You taking me to a church? It's never a bad time to confess your sin. my target. Ah, sorry. It's all right, just a scratch. Probably a splinter. Are we going after whatever it was? Let's not push our luck. I don't want our story to end up like the Baduna chieftain and the hunter. Okay, let's go. They built the chapel after the massacre of the Vaduna people. You still haven't told me how that happened. The hunter became the chief and moved in with his family. It wasn't the first time that kind of thing had happened. But one thing did happen for the first time. The wounds the bear had inflicted on the real chief were less serious than they seemed. A few days later, he came back and claimed what was his. But the hunter wasn't so sure. He was the chieftain now. Yes, but the hunter won his new identity by leaving the old chief to his fate. He betrayed his friend, I agree with you. As did many of the Badunas. But the rest of the village didn't see it that way. The Badunas were split into supporters of the new chief and the old one, and... Well, you know how it all ended. Elliot, I have a problem. I think Delphine is cheating on me with another man. Whoa. Some nights when I lie down next to her in bed, her hair smells of gunpowder. Someone who 
regularly handles guns is touching her. Do you have any idea who it could be? That's impossible. Your wife would never do that to you. And what if you're getting the smell of powder on her yourself? I wash my hands before I touch my wife, Elliot. Don't you? Jim, please, put the gun down. Yeah, Jim, put it down. Your legs. You know why they built this chapel? We know. Typical Americans. They find that a bunch of crazies from some wacky religion have killed each other and they build them a church, eh? <laughs> As if the dead give a damn about their Christian God. Jim, what's going on? I told you, it's a surprise. Who's going in? He is. Me? Trust me. Godness. If I didn't, I couldn't survive this war. Someone had some fun at these critters' expense. I have a gun pointing at your head. I could kill you right now. But you haven't. So you're either a big mouth or a coward. I won't shoot. I'm here to help you. Yeah? Look under your knees. What is this? To you, just a bunch of scribbles. But to someone who knows what he's looking at, it could be prison bars for Capone. What, he hates reading so much he sees a book as a prison sentence? Very funny, Ness. Your financial specialist Garrison, you'll know what to do. Who are you? What do you care? I'm serving you Capone's head on a golden plate. Don't ask questions. Just beat it, Ness. The sooner you set Garrison to work, the sooner all this will be over. God, I hate cops. Carmine? Please, no. Why? He threatened my kids. Capone? No, you're his right-hand man, his chief executioner. He's lost his mind. He suspects everyone and everything. He has to be stopped. Don't kill me, for my kid's sake. You remember Don Prescott? 33 years on the force, my first partner. You left his face in such a mess, they had to make him a clay mask so his family could look at him at the funeral. 
Capone wanted him dead. What about Amber Fisher, 15 years old? You held her prisoner for three days. She committed suicide only hours before we came to rescue her. I don't need to remind you what you did to her, do I? I was following orders. No. Capone orders you to kill. You improvise. You enjoy it. You can't do this! Elliot, don't do it. Kill an unarmed man and it'll haunt you your whole life. I deserve a trial! We're cops, not killers! Jesus, weren't you... Control your anger! Weren't you the most honest man in Santa Esperanza? Go back to Capone. Don't let him suspect a thing. And when I bring him to justice, you'll testify against him. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ness. Thank you. Well done. I made that mistake once. Only once. And it still torments me. Let's go. Congratulations, Carmine. Great performance. My kids. Don't worry. I'm not going to touch them. Thank you. Thank you. I always keep my word. If Capone finds out what you made me do, he'll kill me. Uh, that won't happen. You have my word. Thank you. Thank you. I think Capone is going to need a new right-hand man. Stroke of luck. Now, all we need to do is be careful. See what Garrison can find. Jim, about Delphine? Shut it. First we finish Capone. Then we talk. Thank you. 
No, please, no. Is this how you respect a dead man's wishes? <laughs> 